Hey guys, if you've ever wondered what having just a regular water pan in your cooker versus a water pan with boiling water in your cooker will do, this is the video for you. Hey guys, this is Steve over at Cookout Coach. We're all about trying to help you take your barbecue game to the next level. Now if that sounds like something you might need in your life, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Now today what we're going to be doing is talking about the difference between having just a water pan in your smoker versus having a water pan that boils the water in your smoker. Now, if you're not that familiar with uh, smoking meats, you might not know, that might not sound like it should be a difference. You know, because that's the way I used to think. This all came about, really, from watching Barbecue Pitmasters back in the day. I'd hear Myron Mixon talk about his water pans had to be flame kissed and they had to boil, otherwise they weren't gonna do anything. I didn't quite understand what he was saying because science tells me that at 212 degrees, water boils. Well, that's sort of true. But what he was talking about was a hard rolling boil. And I didn't quite understand that until I got to go down to Georgia and cook on a Myron Mixon smoker. I'll put the link to that video up here. And what would happen was it would set that bark so fast. I don't know why, but it definitely did. So today we're gonna see if we can't recreate that using two Weber Smoky Mountains. So to test this, we're gonna use two Weber 22 inch Smoky Mountains. One we're gonna be running just as a regular um, Weber Smoky Mountain with the Barbecue Guru attached to it. I'm gonna tell you why, because the second one, we're gonna be running with wood splits. Now, the Weber Smoky Mountain isn't designed to be run like this. Um, you know, if you're gonna do this, you know, my word of caution is really probably don't. It, it's gonna be tricky at best. Um, we're just gonna have to see what happens. But the reason I'm using the Barbecue Guru on the other Smoky Mountain is so that wherever temperature that split Smoky Mountain settles in at, I can set the standard Smoky Mountain to, to be with it. So all we're going to be doing is I'm going to use B&B &B lump charcoal, lump hickory charcoal in both smokers. Now in my standard smoky mountain, I'm going to use it like I would a standard smoky mountain. I buried some hickory chunks underneath the B&B &B charcoal, lit off a fire starter, and let the barbecue guru do its thing. What we're going to do in the one with the splits is I lit a full chimney of B&B &B charcoal and threw it down so I have a bed of coals. And then we're just going to start to tossing um, western wood mini logs that you buy at Walmart or anywhere else. It's the, the small ones built for, you know, your smokers like your uh, your Longhorns, you know, those kind of things. The ones you'd buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, those offset smokers. Now to start off with, I'm gonna load these both down with two gallons of water. And we're gonna see where the one with wood settles in at. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and trim and season up my beef short ribs. Now while this video isn't really about the trimming and the seasoning, um, what I'm using today are two things from, you can find over at Heaven Made Products. One is I'm gonna lay down a base coat of It's Incredible, which is just a great all-purpose seasoning. And the other is my buddy Rich over at Rich's River Smokers West Virginia. Uh, he's got his own rub called Rich's River Dirt. And today I'm gonna to be throwing down some of the sweet. And you might be thinking, sweet on a beef. Well, it's it's a really good, well-rounded rub. It's It's got plenty of savory notes in there. And a little bit of sweet on beef really comes across nicely, in my opinion. So we're gonna go ahead and throw some of this down on it and let that beef sweat out some. It looks like our wood split Weber Smoky Mountain is going to settle in somewhere between 400 and 350. I've ran a couple splits through it. It'll jump up to 400 and then when it's time to throw another split on, it'll drop down to 360, 350. So what I'm going to do is we're going to run at that temperature. It looks like we're going hot and fast today. And on the standard Smoky Mountain, I'm going to set it at about 380. Um, yeah, 380. And we're just going to let it sort of try to sit in the middle of those because we're doing the best we can. This isn't a perfect experiment, but we're just trying to show the difference. Okay, so here we are going on to the traditional Weber Smoky Mountain being ran by the Guru. Uh, you can see that the water's not really boiling in there. Here we go on to the uh, Weber Smoky Mountain with the wood fire in the bottom. If you, you can see down there in the uh, water, it's jumping a lot more. It's starting to get that boil to it. So we're gonna see what the difference is. So here we are at the hour mark on the beef short ribs over top of the Weber that's just running standard. It's being run with the Barbecue Guru. Uh, as you can see, the bark still comes off on my finger. It's generally wet. It's coming along nicely, uh, coming along as I would expect it. Let's check the other one. Wow, okay, there's the difference. This bark is uh, almost entirely set now. I don't know if you can see, I hope that's coming through good in the camera, but that is set nicely. Um, honestly, I'll probably let this go another 
10 or 15 minutes just to set up the last little bits and then this will be ready to wrap. All right, it's been a few more minutes. Let's go ahead and check what the internal temp is on this sucker. I don't know if you can see it there. We're running about 133 in the middle, but the bark is all set. I'm real happy with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Now this is this is sort of the difference when, um, and this isn't a plug for the Myron Mix and Smoker guys, but when I went down and did that cook in Georgia, I was just so surprised. The difference is because that bark sets, um, we can go ahead and wrap this up, so we'll be able to get this done quicker. So I'm gonna wrap this up, keep checking on the other one, and the end we'll see if there's a uh, time difference in this. All right, so here we are about an hour after we wrapped our other set of beef short ribs. It looks like we're pretty good now. Um, that bark is definitely set. Let's see what the difference is in the temp on this one versus what it was on our other. I gotta be right in the bone right there. Let's see. This is reading 203. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm just not even going to wrap this one then. We'll just let it ride and see what happens. All right, so our meat has finished cooking. It's kind of weird. I don't know how to explain it yet. But these beef short ribs behave the exact same way as the ribs and the pork butt that I cooked down in Georgia on the Myron Mix and Smokers behave. And that is the... The beef rib that was on the Weber Smoky Mountain that had the wood splits to boil the water, the flames actually jump up, kiss that pan, and boil that water. The bark set an hour before the other ribs set. And these things only ended up cooking for about two and a half hours. So two and a half hours in foil is a big difference between our other one, which the bark just set right before it was finished. So we ended up with the wood-fired boiling water getting to spend an hour and a half in foil and the Weber Smoky Mountain ran standard with water in the pan never spend any time in the foil just the way my head works that's got to tell me that the one on the boiling water has to be a little more tender I think we're gonna taste this here in a second and find out but that was that was incredible the weirdest part to me and I've duplicated this now between Georgia and my own home is they finish cooking at the same time. I don't know exactly why that is. We're always told that foil uh, decreases the cook time. It speeds everything up. But in my experience on two different cooks now, it hasn't. So it's very interesting to me. Um, we're definitely gonna taste test this. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a YouTube cooking show without a taste test and you know, it's my favorite part anyways. But before we do, I just wanted to you know, leave it with a few thoughts. So thought number one, trying to do this today was extremely difficult. Um, that Weber Smoky Mountain not designed to run like that, and the only way I could do it was with the front panel off, sort of like uh, my buddy Justin over at Baby Back Maniac did a Santa Maria style video, and he had his front panel off, and I wasn't sure why. Well, now I know why. Is you can't hold that flame with the front panel on. There's not enough air that can get into the Smoky Mountain. It's just not built to do that. Um, I really don't recommend anybody try to cook like this unless you just want to do it for sillies. It's it's not easy. It's tough to regulate. Um, it's just interesting. But it did serve our purpose today. The second is, just as I thought before we started this, uh, just like happened down in Georgia on uh, the Myron Mixon H2O versus the Gravity, the, the Weber with the boiling water set that bark more than double as fast as the Weber Smoky Mountain that didn't that had a water pan. That's why generally I don't like to run water pans in my smokers because they do most of them do what we saw on the Weber Smoky Mountain today. You know there's no flame kissing that pan to make it boil and that bark just takes forever to sit. So I run a Weber Smoky Mountain essentially like a like an ugly drum smoker with a diffuser in it just because I hate having to fight to get my bark to set. So if you wanted to try to do this I'd recommend buying a smoker that's actually designed and set up to have a water pan with log splits to boil that water. That's just me. Okay, these have been resting for two hours. Let's go ahead and get into it. 
All right, let's get a piece off of each one. This is the one that was on the Warbur Smoky Mountain Ranch traditionally with water. Let's take a look at it here. Got a pretty good little smoke ring on it. So it feels pretty tender. Let's go ahead and cut a little slice. Okay. All right, now let's get this guy. This is the bigger piece for sure. same smoke ring on it. Go ahead and cut a little piece off of this one to try. Okay. Alright, let's give them a shot. So first, this is our piece that was on the Weber Smoky Mountain that we were powering with wood splits. Great, great piece of short rib. Those uh, seasonings, just the, the it's incredible, and the the riches riveter sweet season that great. The bark was fantastic, which the bark is what we've been talking about, Dave. Let's go ahead and try the um, the other piece. Now this is the piece that was on the Weber Smoky Mountain ran traditionally, um, hot and fast. Let's give it a shot. It's not a good bark too, but remember it took us an extra hour to set that bark. Um, other than that, it's maybe a hint more, a hint not as tender. Still very good, but you gotta remember it's been an extra, well it was never wrapped. Um, you know, that's gonna, that's gonna do some different things to it. All in all, both fantastic pieces of short rib. Um, but I just wanted to do this video, just one, to see if I could reproduce it. Two, to let you know that, you know, if you're, if you have a, I don't know, a special sauce that you want to wrap with, you know, you can get some more time in that maybe if you do sit things a certain way. Or, um, really just be cognizant of, there's a big difference between water that's just put in, in a pan or in cans or whatever your, your choice may be, versus water that's actually boiled. It will have an effect on your meat. It's interesting. I don't know why, you know, if there's a physicist that ever watches this or someone who just understands the science, drop a comment down below. Let me know what's going on. I'd love to know. But, yeah, I'm going to get to eating these. Until next time, y'all take it easy.